question that's been getting a lot of exposure lately. People unfairly, are they being singled out by those hired to protect us? Now that's the question. Poor relations between community members and police can lead to feelings of distrust, anger, and fear. Don Nelson has been exploring this issue and joins us with more. Roland Michelle, police departments around the country are reevaluating how their police officers deal directly with their citizens, and it's happening right here in the Treasure Valley. Profiling is human nature. Admit it or not, we all do it. But when a law enforcement agency is accused of it, that crosses the line. Whether it be a police officer in New York or a state trooper in Idaho suspicious of an out-of-state driver, from top to bottom, officers should be held to a higher standard. Those of us in law enforcement must redouble our efforts to resist bias and prejudice. We must better understand the people we serve and protect. Does it happen in Boise? Does it happen in Idaho? I do think that there is a perception out there. Um, I, we have a pretty good relationship with the people of color uh, and, and people of, of different origins, the Hispanic communities in our community. Do subtle, uh, deal with the high. Craig Polite has lived in Idaho for a few years and has never had a serious confrontation with the police officer. But when I asked, do you ever drive around Boise? When you see a uh, police officer passing you or at the stoplight next to you, or across do, the do street. I get nervous? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. All the time. Every time. Um, I mean, the only time I'm not nervous is when I'm in the passenger seat. The American Civil Liberties Union says, look at the numbers. Per capita, the numbers of African Americans and Latinos are actually being stopped by law enforcement at a higher percentage uh, than, 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 than their counterparts that are white, actually. And that should be concerning for all Idahoans. Leo Morales was one of four panel members at a recent public forum hosted by Boise Public Radio. They were there to discuss community and public relations. One of the um, comments that I know was made, particularly around Ferguson, is that the war on drugs really sort of changed the community and police. You are violating the state-imposed curfew. Justified or not, the shooting of Michael Brown turned the streets of Ferguson, Missouri into a war zone. It taught us what happens when police and its citizens split apart. And I couldn't be happier with the relationship that we currently enjoy, although that can change quickly on sometimes what an issue that you're not aware of. And so it's a constant attention and especially looking at those groups within your community that might not share that level of trust and relationship with the police department. I'm a little concerned that there isn't any. Dan Truscott was in attendance that night, a criminal defense attorney in Boise who has a very different view about policing in Idaho. Do you think that guy would have been pulled over if he had Idaho plates? No way. Truscott is referring to a 69-year-old Colorado man who has filed a lawsuit claiming he was the victim of license plate profiling on ID4 during a road stop through Idaho two years ago. And if you review that video, in my opinion, it's hard to come to any objective analysis th to reach any other conclusion. We target criminal behavior. Sergeant Joe Ramirez says that's just not the case in Nampa. He breaks this hard decision down to 14 simple words. If you don't want police what they feel is harassment, don't do criminal behavior. Isn't it kind of sad and a bit silly that we're even having this conversation? I agree with you 120%. Why do we even talking about it? In 2015, in 2015, why do we have to sit down and, and have do this a story conversation? about this? Well, why do we have to do a story about this in 2015? Why? Hmm. Hmm. And yet we are because yeah, the continues. issues need to be talked about. Okay, question. Do we think that um, law enforcement is diverse enough here in Idaho? And if not, how do we change that, yeah. Don? Well, those are good questions. Chief Bowen says, no, they're not diverse enough. Mm -hmm. uh, he admits that. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, uh, in uh, the last room of job applicants here in Boise, 90 plus percent were white male adults. And it's not just race, so let's not confuse sure. this. It's not mm -hmm. just racial profiling, uh, sexual preference, religious, cultural backgrounds. That's where you start building trust. And that, if that's the bottom line on any of this, it's the trust between any law enforcement agency and its citizens. And if that's the case, we still have a long way to go. I think every agency in the country yeah. can, would say.